What's good, YouTube? How's everyone doing? This is your boy Reg in the building. Um, I decided to do a CD recap and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I like <clears throat> excuse me. You know, like I said before, I like to do this like at least every two, maybe three years. You know, the last CD recap, of course, I did way back in um 2020 and whatnot. It was either 2019, 2020, one of them years and shit. So. And the good thing about this is that I actually put all of the un like the uncased CDs here too. I'm in the process of listening to every album and stuff like that too, honestly too. And since it's the tenth anniversary of this channel coming up very soon and stuff like that, I thought now would be a good time to look back at my collection. Um, I'm gonna start off with like this section first. Depending on what time it is, what time I finish this up, I'm gonna probably do like the front right here. If I'm still good on time, then most more than likely I'll probably do the back too. So let's get the shit started. First album is Aaliyah with AJ Nothing But a Number. This album came out in 1994. Very dope album and whatnot. This is when she was working with R. Kelly. You know, to many people, this album probably did not age a lot well, but you know what? You know, I still fuck with this album. Um, in comparison to like the first three, this might be my third favorite album, my least favorite. But in this case, it does not mean it's a bad album. Like I love songs like Back and Forth. Her cover of At Your Best You Are Love was very dope. Street Thing, Old School. Yeah, man, this is a very dope album and stuff like that. Highly recommend it. <clears throat> then we got One in a Million. This came out in 1996. My honest opinion, this to me is her best studio album to date. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is when she started working with Timbaland and fucking Missy Elliott. Excuse me, my quick. And Missy Elliott. Yeah, man, this album to me definitely has some of her best songs. You know, I love Four Page Letter. The title track was very dope. A Girl Like You with Tretch. That might be my favorite track off this album. Um, never giving up. My least favorite track, surprisingly, might be her cover of "Got to Give It Up." I don't know. I just never really vibe with that cover and stuff like that. Too, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it's kind of weird because you know when it's a Marvin Gaye, Marvin Gaye, he's kind of like an artist. You know, not everyone can cover his song. That's all I'm going to say on that. So, but one in a million. That's a very dope record right there. Then we got her last album, the self titled. This came out in 2001. Honestly, when I first heard this record, I was not really a big fan of this record, to believe it or not. But over the years, this one kind of grew on me and shit too, you know what I'm saying? I definitely felt like this album definitely was her most mature and whatnot too, you know what I'm saying? This is known for songs like um, Rock the Boat, um, Loose Rap was very dope. I love I Care For You, you know, um, You Got Nerve. This whatever, you know, this this album was very dope, you know what I'm saying? I know a lot of fans say this is the best studio album. You know, I'm not going to argue with that. I'm more of a one in a million person, but to each his own. That's all I got to say. Then we got Aerosmith with their 1989 album, Pump. Um, I actually got this one from Edward McKay, so I don't know who these motherfuckers are on the fucking CD case. Yeah, man, you guys should know I'm not really the biggest Aerosmith fan, as you guys witnessed in the discography breakdown. But this is probably my third favorite album from them. This album definitely had like a lot of dope tracks, like Janie's Got a Gun, um, fucking Monkey on My Back, Love in the Elevator. You know what I'm saying? Like this probably next to Permanent Vacation and Done with Mirrors, probably my favorite albums they've done in the 80s. And yes, I've said Done with Mirrors. I, I feel like Done with Mirrors is very slept on. I need to get my hands on that record and shit. Um, but this one right here, probably to me the last great album because I was never a big fan of Get a Grip like that. But yeah. Then we got After Seven with um, we got After Seven with their second album, Taking My Time. Um, this came out in 1992. Very dope record to me. This is their best studio album. This is the album they did without Babyface, and I feel like they did a damn good job. I've always considered this 
<laughs> like the best non babyface album. I don't know, because you can still tell it still had like some babyface influences. You know what I'm saying? I love I'm kicking it. That cover of Baby I'm for Real slash Natural High. Um, Taking My Time, Love by Day, Love by Night. Very dope record. Must have in your collection. Yeah, man. Then we got Christina Aguilera. This is fucking Strip. This one came out in 2002. Pretty cool record. Pretty dope. Um, This is like probably like when she really wanted to get more creative control. She didn't want to get pigeonholed in that whole pop, that bubblegum pop kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like this song, this album is known for songs like um, Beautiful. That's a dope record. Dirty with Redman. Um, it was that that was like a very controversial song back at that time and stuff like that. Um, Infatuation, Loving Me for Me. That's probably my favorite track off this album. Yeah, this album to me, very dope record and shit. Probably my second favorite album. My first favorite is fucking Back to Basics. This came out in 2006. Very dope record and whatnot too. Um, shout out to um. Ashley for getting me these, by the way. You know what I'm saying? Um, the first disc is like a lot more jazzier, you know, jazz, jazzy and soul influences. The second disc is a bit more experimental and shit. Um, she was working with Prima around this time. Like, who'd imagine Prima when it's Christina Aguilera? I love songs like um, Make Me Wanna Pray, Back in the Day. Oh my fucking God, I love that track. Um, Without You, Still Dirty was dope. Mercy on Me. Enter the circus. Definitely expect a view on this record and shit like that. So that's back to basics. Then we got Alice in Chains with um Dirt. This came out in 1992. This is the second studio album. My favorite album they've ever done. This to me was to me one of the best grunge albums ever. You know what I'm saying? I love songs like Rooster. You know, um, the title track was dope, Wood. Um, which that was a tribute to the lead singer of um, what's the group called? I think it's called like Mother Love Bone. I I I'm probably fucking up the t- name name of the group, but y'all know who I'm talking about. Um, this was a very dope record. I love how dark and grimy this shit was. Then we got their next album, um, the title self titled album back in 1995. A very dope album as well too. I kind of feel like this one don't get is it just do like that. Um, cause this came out around the time when after like Lane Stately and um I think Jerry Control, they did like this little super group and whatnot, which um ah damn I, I I had it on the tip of my tongue and stuff like that. You know, don't mind me, it's, I'm doing this late at night anyway, but I I'll, I'll probably make a side note on the comments and shit like that too. But j- j- Jar of Flies, that's the shit. Yeah, Jar of Flies. That I need to get my hands on that. Um, record right there. That was a very dope one. Now this one again was a very dope run. It has songs like um, Slush Factory, Heaven Beside You, Shaming You. Very dope record. Kind of underrated if you ask me. Then we got AMG with Bitch Better Ask My Money. Bitch Better Have My Money. This came out 1991. This was um, affi- he was affiliated with um fucking DJ Quick and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, this album to me is a West Coast classic. I don't give a fuck what no one says. Don't mind me. I'm just getting some water right quick. Excuse me. This right here is a fucking West Coast classic. Like, this shit has songs like the title track, Vertical Joyride, um, Jiggable Pie was my shit, Lick em Low Lover, I love that shit, man. Um, I kind of like this album over that um one from ninety five. The one from ninety five was cool, but it the production to me was a bit blander compared to this one and shit like that too. But yeah, man, DJ Quick had some of his best shit on this one. So yeah, man. Then we got ASAP Rocky with his um twenty fifteen album at Long Glass ASAP. This album to me is my favorite shit he's ever done and stuff like that. So you know what I'm saying. Um, <clears throat> I remember when this album came out too, man. This uh, 2015 was such a good year in hip hop. I don't give a fuck, man. Like that shit had a lot of quality. Um, I love some like Juke Boy, Jukebox Joints. That's my favorite shit. 
Um, fucking, what's that shit? Max B was dope. I love Wavy Bone. That Wavy, I love that beat, man. Um, fucking Holy Ghost. Yeah, man, this to me is his last great album. I did not like fucking Testing. I felt like Testing was kind of whack. But this shit right here, fucking dope album. Might have to do a review on that one day. Then we got AZ, Do or Die. Um, this came out in 1995. Fucking dope album, classic album in my opinion. Um, sorry for the. I had to actually tape this shit to a case because the guy who gave it to me, he gave me the CD and the booklet and stuff like that too. So forgive the quality. Um, but this record right here was very dope. I love um, give me yours. I love that in the remix. Um, almost like Eric Sermon did that remix and shit. Rather unique. Mo Money, Mo Murder, Mo Homicide. Oh my God. That's actually my favorite AZ and Nas collab too. I like that a bit more than Life's a Bitch. Even though I, I still fuck with Life's a Bitch. Do or Die. Yeah, man. This album to me, very, very, very dope record. One of the best mafioso hip hop albums to date. You know what I'm saying? AZ. Y'all know what it is. Then we got BG with Chopper City in the Ghetto. Very dope album and stuff like that. This album came out in 99. You know, I'm not really the biggest, biggest, biggest Cash Money fan, but, you know, BG and Juvie were my favorites after Hot Boys and stuff. I need to get some Juvie albums too, honestly. Um, This shit was known for songs like, you know, Bling Bling, Real Niggas, Dog Ass. I love that shit. Hard Times. You know, one thing I like about BG, you know, he definitely had like a such a, Eat like an East Coast flow. Like you can tell he was definitely influenced a lot by East Coast cats and shit. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man. BG, hold your head up and stuff. That's all I gotta say. Then we got Babyface with um for the cool in you. This album came out in 1993. My favorite album he's ever done and whatnot. This album to me definitely is the definition of like R- like that smooth R and B. And what not like ninety three definitely was a dope year for R and B. I love songs like Never Keeping Secrets, the title track. Basically the first three tracks are just my favorites and stuff, especially Lady Lady. Um Illusions was dope. He did a cover of You Are So Beautiful and whatnot too, you know. Very, very, very dope album. You must have in your collection. That album and a day are my favorite albums he's ever done. And then we got Joy Badass. With um All American Badass, this album came out um 2016. Damn, this is a very dope record and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, this definitely is probably his most political album to date. He was definitely talking about like a lot of the racial issues at that time too. You know, I love Land of the Free, Temptation, Devastated, Legendary with J Cole, and then even his new album he recently came out with is very dope, man. It's like he. He he's he never ceases to amaze me. I, I feel like Joey's definitely one of my favorite rappers of of this day and age and shit like that too. You know what I'm saying? And he, and he's a, he's doing his thing on power. So shout out to the kid right there. Yes, we got the queen right here, Erica Badu, Baduism. This came out in 1997. Um, I got the CD and I got the vinyl version of this too. Just throwing that shit out there. Yeah, man, one of the best Neo... Actually, I'm, I'm going to be real. This is probably my favorite Neo Soul album to date, man. I'm, I'm going to be real with you. This is one I remember listening to this head on, like, days after days after days, man. Other Side of the Game, her cover of Four Leaf Clover, Drama, Rimshot, On and On, Next Lifetime, which also has, to me, one of the best music videos of all time. You know what I'm saying? So, Erica Badu, um, Baduism. Then we got her live album in 1997 too, which very dope record and stuff like that, you know. I mostly like this record because she does very dope covers of like um, Boogie Nights, you know, All Night Long for the Mary Jane Girls and whatnot, you know. And of course, this has the infamous Tyrone and stuff like that too, which possibly one of my favorite songs she's ever done. Yeah, man, fucking classic shit. Then we got Mama's Gun. This came out in 2001. Um, very dope record. Um, yeah, I just have the CD on this one. But yeah, very, very, very dope record and stuff like that. This is known for songs like Didn't You Know, Bag Lady, um, Booty. I love that shit. In Love With You. Yeah, man. This is a very dope record. I love it. Probably my second favorite album she's ever done. 
And then we got her album from um, 2007, New America Part 1. I love this fucking record, too. You know what I'm saying? Um, she has songs like Me, The Cell, That Hump, Telephone. Like, her discography, you cannot go wrong with her discography. I need, I need to get my hands on Worldwide Underground from 2003, but that one's a bit hard to come by where I stay at and shit, too. So, yeah, man, but... I I have a feeling like it's gonna be in like one of those like thrift stores because I do plan on going to Edward McKay sometime next month. I just gotta get some shit straight first, but yeah, man. Then we got fucking Bahamadia collage. This album came out in nineteen ninety six. A very 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 dope record. This to me is her best album to date. I love songs like fucking um the John. You know how we do. That freak shit, true honey buns. Oh my god, through the hard way. Like, this is definitely a good mix of like the gang star and the roots. Cause you know, she was originally an affiliate of the roots, and then she got picked up by Guru and shit like that too, you know. So yeah, man, Bahamadia, man. I need to get my hands on her other album too. Then I got um pretty much Anita Baker's first five albums. And those include like the song twist, rapture, giving you the best that I got, compositions, rhythm of love. Yeah, man, Anita Baker, definitely one of my favorite artists. I, I love getting like these original album series and stuff like that too. You know what I'm saying? Song trust, very dope record, very underrated and whatnot. Rapture, I mean, come on, that's actually my favorite album she's ever done. Giving you the I mean, that's someone's sweet love. Um, fucking been so long. I love that record. Giving you the best that I got. Classic shit too. Compositions. I honestly definitely got to talk about compositions too, you know. Rhythm of Love. Definitely a very dope record from Anita Baker. I mean, all I'm missing really is a Christmas album and shit too. But that one's a bit hard to come by. Then we got fucking Lloyd Banks. The Hunger for More. This came out in 2000 and... What was the first? 2004, yeah. Brain, brain fart for a minute. Yeah, one of my favorite G Unit albums and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, definitely love tracks like Playboy, If You're So Gangsta. That was dope. Karma, I love that one. You know what I'm saying? Lloyd Banks definitely went in on this shit right here, too. Definitely my favorite member off of G Unit. Then we got Who's You Benton with fucking Doshalo. Um, very dope record and stuff like that. One of his one of his best. I love songs like Champion was dope. Wanna be loved. Till I'm laid to rest, you know. He was definitely doing like more like spiritual music with this during this period and stuff too. So very dope record. I love it. Then we got the Beastie Boys with Paul's Boutique. This album came out in 1989. Oh my god. God, this was one of my favorite hip-hop albums to date and shit like that. It's either between this one and Check Your Head as my favorite albums they've ever done. Um, this album is known for songs like Hey Lady, Shake Your Rump, Day in Your Life, and stuff like that, too, you know. It did this album after they left Def Jam Records because, you know, they felt like they weren't getting the right pay. They then went to Capitol Records, took it up with their Dust Brothers and shit. Because, you know, when, this album, when that album came out, it wasn't really a commercial success. It was more... It actually like charted like around the late teens, early twenties, and stuff like that too. But then over years, it, its influence raised up and stuff like that too and stuff. And yeah, man, very very dope record. I love it. You know. Then we got nineteen ninety two with Check Your Head, one of my all time favorite Beastie Boys albums to date. Man, this album to me definitely was like more hip hop oriented up to up to that point and stuff like that too. And they were still like playing like the live instruments and shit, you know. Well they started playing the live instruments of this album. Like I love Past the Mic, So What You Want, Biz vs the News, um, Lighten Up, Professor Booty, where they went after um Sir Third Bass on that track right there, you know what I'm saying? Um this album to me definitely was a very, very dope record and stuff like that. I don't hear a lot of people talk about this album because it's always either like, you know, Paul's Boutique, uh, License to Ill and stuff like that too. But this one right here, very dope record. Love it. Then we got Ill Communication. This came out in 1994. 
another dope album right here, you know. This album was known for songs like Sabotage, um, you know, uh, Root Down. What's that one track? Um, The Scoop, I love that track too. You know, Get It Together. Very, very, very dope album and stuff like that too, you know what I'm saying? The Beastie Boys are probably, like, probably their most... I want to say pretty decent way at the most funkiest. That's all, that's all I want to say. Then we got the um the Root Down EP. This came out in 1995, I believe. Yeah, 1995. This is pretty much like remixes of like Root Down with some tracks from um, Ill Communication. You know, I, I got this part of like a CD lot, I believe, and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Um... You know, pretty nice rarity for the Beastie Boys. That's all I gotta say. And then we got the Beat Nuts with Intoxicated Demons. This came out in 1993. I'm not really the biggest, biggest, biggest Beat Nuts fan right there, but I do like the earlier stuff. Like, by the early stuff, I mean just Intoxicated Demons. And the, um, the next album I'm gonna talk about, Street Level. This one right here definitely... Did it? They did their thing with this one, like Psycho Dwarf, Vein, Vein of the Tech. You know, story was pretty dope and shit like that. Must have your collection. Then we got fucking Street Level. Must have your collection too. This album right here is a fucking dope album. This came out in 1994. You know what I'm saying? Um, I love tracks like Let Off a Couple, Fried Chicken, Lick the Pussy, Sandwiches was pretty good. You know, this album to me. Definitely a dope record and stuff like that too. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. I'm, I need. To, I might need to get my hands on Stone Crazy one day. That's probably the last great album I do like from them from '97. This shit. Then we got Jeff Beck with Wired. This came out in 1976. Jeff Beck, you know, he was a member of the Yardbirds and stuff like that. You know, he had his own band too, the Jeff Beck Group. Very, very, very dope guitarist and stuff like that. You know. This was around the time he was in the late 70s. He had a little solo thing going. He had songs like Goodbye Pork Pie Hat, Come Dance and Let Boots, Play With Me. You know what I'm saying? Definitely he, when he was experimental, like Jazz Fusion. Very, very, very dope record and stuff. I, li I like Jeff Beck stuff. Then we got Belbiv DeVoe, WBBD Boot City. This is like the remix album that they came out with of Poison. Very dope album, you know what I'm saying? Um, I like the remix of, you know, um, Word to the Mother. They have um, the She's Dope remix. That was pretty good. You know, you know, for Bell Bell of Old Fans, I would definitely pick this shit up if you can find it and stuff like that. Must have in your collection. Then I got Beyonce with Dangerously in Love. It's a first solo album. Classic album. I don't give a fuck what no one says, you know what I'm saying? You know, this was known for something like Crazy in Love, Me, Myself, and I. Um, version of Close I Get to You was pretty good. You know, Dangerously in Love 2 was dope. You know what I'm saying? Signs with Missy Elliott. Very, very, very dope record. Then we got Lemonade in 2006. And probably my favorite album she's ever came out with and stuff like that too. You know, this album definitely sparked like a lot of conversation. You know what I'm saying? Um, songs like Pray You Catch Me, Daddy Lessons, Sandcastles, F Formation All Night. Very, very, very dope record. Got to, maybe I have to talk about that one day. Then we got Big Boy with um, Solutions Left Foot. This came out in 2010. Very dope album. This is his first solo album. Probably my favorite solo album from him, too. You know, he has songs like fucking Shutterbug, Tangerine, Hustle Blood. You know what I'm saying? Night, night. I like I like this record. All right, now we're going to go to the Big Daddy Kane. We got Big Daddy Kane with Long Live the Kane from 1988. My favorite Big Daddy Kane album to date. This album to me, definitely. Well, mm, I'm not going to. It's either this one or it's a Big Daddy thing. I This one to me, definitely, you know, he, in terms of like the braggadocia, I definitely feel like it's his best. I love songs like The Day You're Mine. Ain't no half step in, just run with the biz. Yeah, man, this is a hip hop classic. Then we got his second album, It's a Big Daddy Thing. Yeah, this album to me, I have to talk about this one. This might be my favorite album he's ever done. 
next to um, Long Live the King. Oh, shit. You can tell with this album, he was trying to start talking more about some social issues, you know, like calling Mr. Welfare. I love another victory, which might be my favorite Kane sound. Ain't no stopping us now. Pimping it easy, you know, smooth operator. Yeah, I love this one. And then he came out with Taste of Chocolate. Not really a fan of this record like that, you know what I'm saying? Um, Definitely a huge step down from the first two. He was definitely in his R&B bag with this one. But he still has some dope quality on this one. That's one thing I can say about Kane. Like, songs like, um, Because I Can Do It Right, you know what I'm saying? I like Dance With The Devil. I like um Big Daddy vs. Dolomite, you know what I'm saying? But it does have some trash on here, too. Like, the one with Barry White. You know, I keep keep him on the floor. I didn't, like, care for too much for that track. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not one of my favorites. Then we his underrated. The next one, Prince of Darkness. This album, I feel like it's most slept on his discography. You know, it's funny too because I remember reading a lot of comments back and like a lot of forum. People said this was like his weakest album, but like I feel like the R and B joints compared to Taste of Chuck was a bit better. But I'm not really a big fan whenever he does R and B like that. You know, I like um ooh ah. Nah, 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 nah. That's my joint right there. Um, I'm not ashamed. Float was dope. Um, come on down. Very, very, very dope record. Then we got um 1993. Looks like a job for. This actually is probably my third favorite album he's ever done. You know what I'm saying? Um, this down. He went back to his roots with this one. You know what I'm saying? I love songs like How Do You Get a Record Deal. The beef is on. Here comes Kane Scoob. That scrap was dope, you know what I'm saying? Um, brother man, brother man. Yeah, man, this was a dope record. I love this one. Then he came out with Daddy's Home from 1984. Um, this one was solid, you know what I'm saying? It has some joints that I like, like, you know, Show and Prove in the PJs, but some of his lyrics was just a bit more dumbed down compared to like, Long Live the Cane and stuff like that, you know, some of the punchlines he was doing, I wasn't really too big fan of like that, but, you know, it's not really a disappointment like that, you know what I'm saying? Then we have Veterans Day from 1998. This is his last studio album to date. Not really a big fan of this one right here. This one when he was on Joan Tett's label, you know what I'm saying? Um, Uncut Pure was dope. I like that. Um... Terror in your era. Eh. I mean, but this one was right here is pretty forgettable. I'm not gonna lie. Hello. Then we got Big Crit with that live at the underground. Live from the underground, excuse me. This one came out in 2012. Very dope album. Definitely fuck with Big Crit and shit like that. I got a few of his albums. I know I got like vinyl from him and stuff like that too. You know what I'm saying? Um. I love songs like um, Cool to be Southern, I Got This, Money on the Floor, you know, Don't Let Me Down was pretty dope, you know. Yeah, this one right here was pretty dope right here. I like this one. Then we have fucking Big L with this only studio album he ever dropped in his life with Lifestyles of the Poor and Dangerous. This came out in 1995. Very dope album to me. Um, this one right here definitely was known for songs like No Ends, No Skins, MVP, All Black, The Graveyard. Man, this is the perfect album to, to listen to at night and shit like that. This definitely had that more nocturnal feel and stuff like that, you know. Very, very, very dope record. And then we have the posthumous album, The Big Picture and whatnot. Um, you know, when... You know, this album definitely came out like a couple of years months after he died. It's mostly filled with like unreleased tracks, you know, freestyles and stuff like that. As far as Parsimus albums go, it's one of the better ones I've list I've heard over the years and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I love Ebonics. That my my is my joint. The enemy with Fat Joe, Far Back with Kooji Rap, Platinum Plus with Big Daddy Kane. Yeah, this album to me, very dope record right here. Rest in peace, Big L. Then we got Big Pun with Capital Punishment. Came out in 1998. Very dope record. Um, yeah, this is like a special edition one, you know. 
You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, the um, original cover just has a close-up on his face and stuff like that. But you know me. I had to look for this version of shit. Um, I love songs. Yeah, forget the quality on this. I'm trying to keep this together. Um, you came up, Dream Shatterer. You went a killer, Glamour Life. I mean, super lyrical. I mean, this album has like 24 tracks, but it's literally all bangers and stuff like that. You know, this definitely is a hip-hop classic. One of my favorite, um, one of my favorite albums from '98. Rest in peace to Big Pun, by the way. Then we have um Black Eyed Peas with Bridging the Gap. This came out in 2000. Is it 2000? Yeah, 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 man. This was definitely before like they were like really, really pop and stuff like that. As you can see, I got this from Edward McKay. Um, this might be actually my favorite next to Ella Funk. And stuff like that too. I love fucking weekends. You know, on my own was pretty dope. I love Cali to New York with Dela. You know what I'm saying? I'm not like the biggest Black Eyed Peas fan, but I do love this period from them and shit like that. Then we got Ella Funk. This came out in fucking 2003. Controversial opinion. This is actually my favorite album from Black Eyed Peas. And I know what you guys are saying. Well, it has Fergie in it. Yeah, I mean, it has Fergie in it, but the quality of the music was very dope. I feel like they never topped this record and stuff. I know people like the end, too. I'm going to say my thoughts on that one once, if I do ever come across it. That's all I got to say. Latin Girls was pretty dope. Sexy was dope. You know, um, Shut Up, I like that one and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, this is an FYE purchase and stuff, too, so... Yeah, man. Then we got Black Moon. Who got the prop? Who got the prop? Show him Z. Oh, man. This this definitely is my favorite album they've ever came out with. Hip Hop Classic right here. Definitely introduced like, the whole boot camp click. This is known for songs like Who Got the Props? I Got You Open. Act Like You Want It. Shit is Real. I mean, again, another dope nocturnal, you know, fucking album right here. I can only really play this album at night and shit. That's how. Sick it is. Then we got their second album, Warzone. This came out in 1999. Um, six years after. Um, what's the album? What's the album? Enter the stage. Yeah, in between that, you know, they were going through a lot of label issues, especially with nervous, um, nervous records and stuff like that. Um, and nervous records pretty much um getting like a fucked up contract, and they also kind of like. When they separate ways and broke up around that time too, you know what I'm saying? So they had formed Duck Down Records. They were planting the seeds on that. And of course, in 1996, you guys should know that, you know, Nervous Records pretty much put out the compilation Digging in the Vaults, which that's a very dope compilation and stuff like that too. It has remixes, unreleased tracks and stuff like that. But Black Moon didn't really authorize that release. So, in 1999, that's when they came out with this album and shit, too. Yeah, this one right here was a very dope record. You know what I'm saying? You have you have heard Five Foot a bit more on this record and stuff, too. This was known for songs like um, Weight of the World. You know, for all y'all, what's had to be. You know what I'm saying? This one right here was a very dope record and shit. I fuck with it. You know, I'm going to show a couple more and stuff like that. Because I'm going to kind of get a little tired. I um we got fucking Black Star, Black Star. You know, most definitely Tyler Quali. This is their first album. You know what I'm saying? Um, most definitely Tyler Quali or Black Star. Very dope record right here. Hip hop. I am just dropping everything. Shit. Hip hop classic. This is known for songs like Children's Story, Brown Skin, Lady, Dan Dan. I mean, can't go wrong with that. Hater Players, Respiration. My favorite track off this album. Yeah, man. Um, I don't know which one I can like a bit more. I, I'm not gonna like the second album. The one that came out this year was pretty dope too. You know what I'm saying? They still had it. I don't know. We might, I might have to do a video on that one day. So, yeah, man. Very dope album right here. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna show this one all everything down here. I'll save it. I'll add this one to the rest of that when I do it. So I'm really trying to fight to stay awake. Plus, my throat's getting a little dry, and I'm running out of water, too. So, yeah. 
Um, we got Memphis Bleak with his second album. What's this shit called? The Understanding. This one came out in 2000. Um, this actually is my favorite Memphis Bleak album. Even though I'm not like the biggest Memphis Bleak fan and stuff like that too, I got this part for CD Lop, so I can't go wrong with that. You know, um, this is known for songs like Change Up with Jay and Beanie. Do My was pretty good. Um, My Mind Right, which that one, that song was known for, you know, um, Memphis throwing shots at Nas and stuff like that too, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, man, this one right here, very, very, very dope record and shit. I fuck with it. <clears throat> then we got the queen of hip hop soul, Mary J. Blige with What's the 411. Fucking classic album, R&B classic right here. This is known for songs like um, Reminisce, You Remind Me, her cover of Sweet Thing, Love No Limits, Slow Down. I mean, this album to me definitely set the bar for hip-hop soul, definitely added on some marriage of like R&B and hip-hop and stuff too. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we got the remix album, What's the 411 Remix, and so this came out in 1993. Very dope record as well too. Um, yeah, man, um, a lot of the remixes was definitely dope. I love the Real Love remix. What's the Fun One One remix was dope. Yeah, man, I fuck with this shit. Yeah, man. Um, then we got Mary J. Blige with My Life. This is actually her second studio album. Um, yeah, this actually album, a lot of people said this is the best album to date, which I'm not going to get mad about that shit. You know, this album definitely has some heat. You know, she was going through a lot, you know, because she was dating KC from Jodeci at this time, too. You know, um, she was going through, like, a lot of alcohol and drug issues, and this all reflected in her music. Um, by the way, I love the documentary that they came out with, I think, like, a couple months ago. I mean, this album's, album was known for songs like Mary Jane All Night Long, You Bring Me Joy, Mary's Joint. The title track was dope. Um... A cover of Voice Voices, I'm Going Down. I mean, you cannot go wrong with this shit right here. You know what I'm saying? Very, very timeless record. Alrighty, then we have fucking Mary J. Blige with the third studio album, Share My World. This probably is my personal favorite MJB album, you know, next to my life. You know what I'm saying? I felt like this, this album definitely... Was very, very, very dope. You know, I love songs like, you know, Round and Round. Seven Days was dope. You know, it's on with R. Kelly. That was very dope too. You know what I'm saying? I Can Love You was, I love that record. Yeah, this one right here, Must Have in Your Collection. I love that one shit. Then we got, um, that's weird as fuck. Hold on. Oh, I'm tripping. Ooh. I, mean, I was like, well, hold on, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah, so then we got Mary J. Blige, No More Drama. Um, This one came out in 2001. Yeah, this album is a very, very, very dope record right here and stuff like that. Another Mary album, I definitely feel it's a favorite of mine. You know, this was the beginning of like, quote unquote, Happy Mary. I love songs like Where I've Been with Eve. The title track was dope. Family Affair, I mean, come on, you can't go wrong with that. Crazy Games. Yeah, this one, dope record right here. Then we have 2005's Breakthrough. Um, again, again, another dope record. Um, one of the, To me, one of the last really great albums and stuff like that, too. You know what I'm saying? Um, I love songs like Enough Crying. Be Without You was pretty dope. Um, can't Hide From Love With Jay-Z was good. MJB, the MVP. You know, this was a pretty good album and stuff like that, you know? Then we have Blow 5, a porno freak. You know what I'm saying? This shit came out, I want to say this came out like 1996? Yeah, 96. Um, Blow 5, you know, he's definitely one of, like, he's one of the funkiest artists. A lot of people say, he was an early influence for hip hop and stuff like that too. You know, if you listen to Blowfly, he's known for like a lot of the X rated kind of shit. Like he has songs like The Girl Wants to Fuck, 
to fuck the boss, you know what I'm saying? Um, that should already tell you what he's into and shit too. So pretty, pretty dope record. You know, you have to be like really into that kind of music and shit too. Then we have 2001 A Sex Odyssey. Um, this one right here was def pretty much like a compilation of other artists and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Um this came out in ninety seven and shit. You know what I'm saying? This was alright, you know what I'm saying? I I got these at a convention a couple months ago and stuff like that, cause I never actually seen his albums in stores like that too. So I was just like, let me try, let me just check this shit out. Then we got the Blues Brothers with their album um, "Briefcase Full of Blues." This album came out in nineteen seventy eight. You know what I'm saying? This was John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd. Recipes, John Belushi. You know what I'm saying? This was like a live album that they've done. I love songs like, you know, Rubber Biscuit was dope. They cover Groove Me, you know, Hey Bartender. Um, yeah, this one right here was a very dope record. I, I, I like this one. Then we got Bone Thugs and Harmony, um, E1999 Eternal. This was a very dope record and shit like that too. Probably my second favorite album they've ever come out with, you know. Love songs like um, Crept and Retain, Mr. Bill Collecting, Bud Smokers Only, The Crossroads, and shit like that. Um, yeah, very dope record and stuff. I love it. All right, I'm going to show these last couple ones right here. We got Boogie Down Productions. Yes, Criminal Minded. This came out in 1987. Very dope record. Hip-hop classic right here. You know what I'm saying? Um... This was like before, like, you no, know, um, they got all conscious, you know, they were definitely on their street shit with this one. You know, songs like South Bronx and The Bridge is Over, those songs were pretty popular, especially when it came to like the whole, um, bridge wars that happened and stuff like that. The title track I love, uh, word from my sponsor, da 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 dope album and stuff like that too you know then we have um the second album by any Me all means necessary this came out one year after 1988 this was um released right after scott lavox murder and stuff like that too you know what i'm saying um and Karis one kind of took on the boogie down productions name you know he had kenny parker you know becoming like the main producer at that time and shit like that you know very dope album i love songs like it's slipping Tossed out the violence was pretty dope. I'm still number one. Um, yeah, man, like fucking timeless shit, you know. Then we got edutainment. You know, probably my favorite album they've ever came out with. You know what I'm saying? Um, this one right here definitely was very, very, very dope. He was definitely on like more conscious kind of shit, you know, beef. It was dope too, house niggas. Love's gonna get you. Um, that's a that's that's a song I originally did not like at first, but then over the years I came to appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? The Kenny Parker show was pretty good. I mean, this one right here, fucking fire. Alright, David Bowie was Honky Dory. This came out in 1971. Yeah, this one right here is a very, very, very dope record right here, you know. Changes was a very dope song. Um, Life on Mars. I love Life on Mars, man. And yeah, I, I definitely need to um, watch that documentary that came out and stuff like that. I'm, I'm going to try to see it in theaters and stuff like that. Probably either, either this week or next week. Um, All the pretty things are dope, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. David Bowie, one of the greats. All right. Then we got Ziggy Stardust, The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust. Um, Very dope album. It's like a compilation. I mean, it's not a compilation. It's like pretty much introducing his alter ego. Uh, I love the title track and stuff like that too. Um, yeah, this one right here was very, 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 very good album. I love it. All right, two more. We got Aladdin Sane. This came out in 1973. Yeah, I love this record. This one was a bit more dark than Ziggy Stardust and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I love um, songs like fucking... The title track was very good. Time was good. Um, the cover of the Rolling Stones for Spending the Night Together was very good. The Gene Genie. 
Yeah, very, very, very dope record. And the last album I want to show y'all for tonight is um Station to Station. This came out in 1976. Yeah, this was the beginning of the Thin White Duke era and whatnot too, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, this one right here, very dope record. I love songs like Stay, the title track, Golden Years, and whatnot too. Wild is the Wind. Yeah, man. Um, very, very, very dis very, very, very dope album and stuff like that too. Must have in your collection. Alright, and that's all the time I have for y'all tonight. I'm gonna definitely do some more of this um in the next couple of weeks, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.